Hi everybody, this is Sandra Angel broadcasting live from Sandy Land. Super happy to be with you tonight. And I just wanted to talk to you about a couple of really cool things. Um, and we're going to get started with the motivational speech as I usually do. I had to um, come on at 5.30 tonight. It doesn't look like 5.30. It looks more like midnight here in California because it's pitch black outside and it's raining. They say it never rains in California. But that's not true. So um, I've got an appointment that I have to go to shortly. So I'm going to be kind of brief tonight. But I've got two really important things. I want to talk to you about the motivational speech, which is extremely important. Hi, Betty. And then I'm going to also talk about copyrights tonight because I know a lot of people have questions about using other people's photos and you know how to um, respect the copyright of others and kind of how to protect their work. So I'm going to talk about that tonight too and I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. Remember I'm not a lawyer, I don't play one on TV so um, I you know can only give you a certain amount of advice but I can tell you what I do and what best practices are when it comes to things like that. I got something poking me here. Hang on. Okay, there we go. So, um, I'm going to start with the motivational speech like I usually do. And um, tonight I want to talk about choosing your words. Because the world was created with words. God said, let there be light and there was light. God said, let there be water and there was water. And, you know, he spoke everything into being and we speak things into being ourselves by the words that we choose. Um, I was posting a really cool um, video about the Mediterranean today. Um, it's a, um, an island in Greece where I want to go. I'd like to go on a Mediterranean cruise. And so one of my friends um, answered my post when I said, who wants to go? And she said, don't I wish, you know? and that is a negative, sorry, it's just a negative thing to say. Because if she really wishes that she could go there, she could make it happen. She could. But instead of that, she's just thinking negative and speaking negative, And that's what's going to happen for her. She's not going to go there. And um, I don't have, you know, any more cleverness or talent or whatever but I'm going to find a way to go there. And um, you need to think about the words that you're choosing. You need to think about what are you saying. Are you saying, um, I wish I was successful, instead of saying, I can't wait to be more successful this year. Um, are you putting up pictures or videos of yourself failing? Um, are you talking about yourself failing? You know, I mean it it's okay to make jokes, but even jokes, I think, have power because they're words. And um, I know I grew up in Africa in a um, private school that was a Christian school, and um, I never heard, I, I went to boarding schools, and I never heard a swear word till I came to America. Um, and when I was 15, I got put in a public school temporarily and that was the first time I ever heard a swear word. And um, I had been brought up that when you speak, if you speak well, you'll fit anywhere. If you speak poorly, you only fit with a certain crowd. And so I just, my mother even said she didn't want us to use words like buck for a dollar or use words like butt for your bottom. Um, she didn't want us to speak poorly because she wanted us to be able to fit with kings and dignitaries and, you know, upper people so that we would speak in a manner that would be fit that kind of environment. And so we got punished when we said bad words. And even if they were, like, she wouldn't let us call her ma for mom because that's, lower class and uh, we didn't we didn't have a lot of money don't get me wrong we lived in a mud hut we wore used clothing you know we didn't have the quote unquote demographics that fits that but she felt that if we you know um 
she she always said use good manners at the table because those are the manners you're going to take everywhere and so I can even remember when we sewed she would always ha have us make sure the under part of the garment was finished and done nicely it, she said when you are speaking this way or eating this way or acting this way in private that's what you're going to act like in public and so it's really important for you to know that if you want to hang out with wealthy clients you need to know how to fit in now unfortunately there are some wealthy people out there that have bad language nowadays in fact our culture has you know really gone down in my opinion the the swearing and the dirty words and just in public I mean it's amazing to me even guys will swear in front of ladies which you know I was brought up that I'm a lady and I just don't a man should treat me like I'm a lady you know and I know that if you act like that and you have a cleaner mouth and you have dignified words and you have a voracious vocabulary instead of just using the common words you're gonna stand out you know especially nowadays because there's so many people that are just potty mouths and you know honestly when I hear people talk like that it makes me cringe and I, I don't want to sound like an old fuddy-duddy or an old lady but I was brought up that I'm in a different category than those other people because I am the child of a king and you'll never hear the queen swear you know you'll never hear her using bad language or you know um, acting improper and things like that and so I just feel like you need to choose your words carefully for one the way that they reflect on you when you're dealing with people and for two because words create now here's the thing when you hang out with people who swear a lot you have a tendency to pick it up and I, that happened to me I was working at a public school and a public college for a while and the people around me were swearing and I found myself every once in a while using a bad word and that's another reason that it's important to hang out with people who are more like you you know who are not going to bring you down to their level and uh, recently I wanted to sign up for this coaching program and this guy was really impressive I really liked his presentation and I was seriously ready to spend thousands of dollars to go to his program but when I listened to his recordings he was swearing a lot and I was planning on taking my 18 year old cousin with me and I wasn't going to put him in an environment where heroes talk like that and so I think it's important for us to be ladies and gentlemen do we let a word slip once in a while? Yeah, because we're around it. Um, but try not to. Pick your own words. Um, we all get frustrated and we need to say something. I usually say, dang it, you know, or I'll say fooey. <laughs> or um, if I really hurt myself, I'll say, ow, that really hurt. You know, and... I remember when I was growing up, we had to have words to <laughs> sling at each other when when we were mad at each other. And so I learned the word gormless, which means spineless. So I, if I was insulting somebody, I would call them a gormless twit. <laughs> you gormless twit. You know, and half the time they had no idea what I was saying, but it got me the satisfaction of, throwing a word at somebody that deserved it <laughs> and so I really think it's important for you to have good language um, for the fact that you're going to be dealing with a variety of people and if you speak well behind the scenes you're going to speak well in front of your public um, Bet Betty says she says yippee skippy when she's excited that's a good one and uh, 
I know the word, like for example, the word God damn it. Do you know what that means? You're asking the creator of the universe to damn what you're talking about. You don't really want that. You know, if you're going to say something, say God bless it. You know, don't bring curses into your world. Words are powerful. And so, um, that quote that I gave you the other night, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things that have virtue, all things that are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And when you think on those things, they come out of your mouth. So that's our lesson for today in terms of uh, motivational speech. Be careful what you say. Don't say that you're you know, not sure you're going to succeed or that you're, like for example, when I do my prayer requests in my, in my Kisses on the Cheek journal where I'm saying thank you to God, I always, you know, say thank you so much for what you did today. Thank you for Sandy Land and all the wonderful people there. Thank you that it rained today because I needed, um, <laughs> I needed it not to be sunny because I was filming videos. And, um, you know, I say all the thank yous, and then when I say my request, I will say things like, um, instead of saying, please make it rain, I'll say, thank you that it's going to rain today. And I think in the positive, and I speak in the positive. That's why when you wrote your goals, I asked you to say them in the positive. Not, I want this to happen, but rather, this is going to happen. Because then you start picturing it, and you use your words to help create. So, um... That's our um, motivational speech for tonight. And so remember, what you say and what you think is what you get. It starts in the mind, what you think, and then what you say is from what you're thinking. And so fill your mind with good thoughts and then speak those good thoughts. And when you're frustrated and upset, choose a dignified word. And be sure you keep your language good so that you will fit in with the highest levels and every level. I know that my sister went on to be the first woman elected to the House of Representatives and uh, in her state and she was, you know, she hung out with President Ford when he came to visit and she hung out with all these dignitaries and, you know, it's just, it, it matters. So, I, um, I want you to think about that because you need to prepare your mindset for the way that things are going to happen for you. And then you need to speak like you belong in that environment. Okay, so now, peanut butter, hello. You're a little late today. Let's have a nap. Good boy. Good boy, peanut butter. Okay, so, um, oh, you're back home. I'm so glad you're back, Lori. Now I can go ahead and mail your bag. I've been holding off because I didn't want it to go in the mail while you were gone. And uh, I know you bought the Monet bag, so that'll be really fun to have that coming your way. Um, so anyway, I'm going to talk today a little bit about copyrights, and I just want to remind you that I am not a lawyer. I don't play one on TV. I cannot give you legal advice. It's against the law for me to do that. But what I can tell you is how I deal with copyrights and my understanding of copyrights as well. So let's start with your um, photo references. You know, as many as photos as I shoot, and I shoot 11 billion, you would think I could only work for my own photos. But the fact is that during the fire, everything that I owned burned, and it had taken me 17 years to acquire all those photos, and they're gone. So once in a while, when I see a really good photo, I try to track down the um, photographer and see if I can ask permission and get a release to draw that picture. And I always get a written release because if you get published in a magazine or on TV or you know even in a gallery or whatever in a contest they're always going to ask you for a release. They're going to say is it your photo or did you get a release and you need a written release. So it's better to get it at the time that you're going to begin drawing and if you don't get a release just don't draw it. 
because there's fabulous photos out there in the world. And always be sure to track down the photographer. And then um, I have a standard release that we give you in a pencil drawing college and you can modify it to suit your own needs. And then I email them that release and I ask them to mail it back to me or email it back with a signature. And then I keep it in my release form uh, folder so that I always am covered when it comes to getting permission. Now, why do we get a release from people? It's because it belongs to them. A copyright is like a fence around your property. If you own an orchard, for example, let's just say that you own an avocado orchard. We're here in California, so we have lots of avocados. So let's just say that you owned an avocado orchard and you didn't have a fence around it and it was really big, lots of acres. Somebody could be walking along and think, oh, here's some avocado trees. I think I'll take some avocados. But if you have a fence around your avocado trees, they know that that belongs to somebody. And so you would have to go ask permission for those avocados because they belong to someone else. You wouldn't want somebody stealing from you for something that belongs. And, you know, sometimes I have a friend who has orange trees in her backyard and she'll often give me oranges. I like her oranges best because they come right off the tree and they're not sour like the ones in the store. But I wouldn't walk onto her backyard and just take them. I would ask because they belong to her, not me. And a while back, I she has a lot of them and she gives them to lots of her neighbors and I asked she gave me a bunch and I the next week I asked her for more and she said, no, I don't have enough. See, that's her prerogative. She owns those oranges. I don't, you know, and so I need to be respectful of her property. And that's the same way with art. You don't want to show people's work and you don't want to, um, you don't want to, you know, use somebody's photo unless you ask them. And so, and sometimes they will say no, especially if they're a photographer who makes money off of their photos. They will often say no because they're going to make money on that. So why should they loan it to you? That's how they earn a living. Like if my friend sold her oranges, it would be kind of rude for me to ask her for them for free. You know, if that's how she was earning money, it's kind of rude for me to ask. So I try to make a note and see if it's a photographer, if it's a really good friend and I know the photographer is, you know, uh, I'll just ask and, and he can say no or she can say no. I have a really good photographer friend that leads safaris to Africa. We grew up together at boarding school in Kenya and he let me use a whole bunch of his wild animal photos at, at no charge because my home burned down and he just felt sorry for me and we're friends. And so, and then I've had other photographers where I ask them and they say no. And that's okay. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to them. Either yes or no is an okay answer. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you own the rights to your own drawings, but you don't own the rights to a drawing that you've copied. So if you're in a workshop of mine, let's just say that you're in colored pencil college or pencil drawing college, and I have a drawing of peanut butter that you're learning from so you can see how to do this argyle fur <laughs> um, I, or how to draw a cat's eyes or whatever, you can't post that as if it's yours. Even though you drew it and to practice, you can't post it because it doesn't belong to you, it belongs to me. And the same with the people, we just finished Colored Pencil College um, and it sold out again. Um, so. Um, but the people who were in there were saying, oh, let's post our work and continue to help each other. Well, there's two things wrong with that. Number one, they don't know enough about colored pencil to coach each other, so that would be the blind leading the blind. And number two, those um, drawings don't belong to them. So that's illegal to post artwork and create a class outside of the class that the copyright belongs to. That's Feeling. That's like saying, oh, don't pay her. Come over here and let's do it for free. And when people work really hard to create classes, they're doing it to earn a living. And so you don't, 
you know, especially, it just surprised me that people would say that in front of me, you know, that it's kind of like walking into an Italian restaurant and, and saying to people who are seated at the table, oh, you don't need to pay this price for lasagna. There's an a, Italian restaurant just three blocks away where they have lasagna for $3 less. And you're saying that in the restaurant of the proprietor? That's just rude. It's just rude. And so learn some manners and don't be talking, especially to the people who own the thing that they're earning a living with and telling them, oh, I'm going to tell your customers how to buy it somewhere else for less. That's just crass and rude. And so, and then the other thing is it's illegal. Um, so, um, try to cultivate some manners, you know, try to think about how you would feel if you were in that situation. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day on the phone and uh, they, they couldn't sell me. The, the lady, I, it was, it was going to be midnight, it was like 9 o'clock um, California time and it was going to be midnight soon and the lady couldn't sell me the cruise that I was wanting to buy because she said they were going to shut the lights off and her company was closing down. And I said to her, because of what she said, that she couldn't sell it and I had to buy it by midnight, can you tell me another one that's open? Now that's different because you can't buy it there and you have to buy it before the night is over and so it's not un impolite to ask that. But just try to pe treat people like you would want to be treated. Um, so if you're in a class, I've often had teachers contact me and say, can I please use your lessons to teach my students? <laughs> and the answer is, yeah, write me a check. You know, if you want this course, I sell courses. If you want the course, pay me the money and then you can use it. And it's per student, not just one fee. You know, so because if you're showing my course to 25 students, that's 25 fees that I didn't get. You know, try to think like the person that you're ripping off, you know. And in these days and age, people are just, they have no conscience. They have no conscience about stealing. Stealing music, stealing movies, um, you know, just stealing from people who are trying to make a living. And, um, so think about that. Just think about what it's like to be that person and have some manners and don't d use anything without permission. At least that teacher wrote to me and asked permission. Most people don't even bother. This, this one teacher, she called, this was like maybe 15 years ago, she called me up and she wanted to buy um, one of my drawing books. And um, she said that hers had worn out because she'd made photocopies for 1,500 students and the binding had worn out. It boggles my mind that she was telling me, I just stole $35,453 from you and I'd like another book so I can steal another $35,000. Crazy how people think, you know? And that's the way you're going to feel when you create art. You're going to pay all this money to go to study with a master. You're going to work like crazy to improve your skills. You're going to create this amazing piece of art. And somebody says to you, can I make a print of it? No. It's in my gallery. If you want it, buy it. You know, just start thinking that way. Think. You know, you wouldn't steal fruit from behind a fence. You wouldn't steal fruit in a grocery store. You pay for it. And you wouldn't steal lessons from somebody who earns their living that way. And you wouldn't steal somebody's art from somebody who creates art for a living. And you wouldn't use it or ask for it or make prints of it even if they don't earn a living without asking. Because it belongs to them, not you. Okay. So that's what you want to do is, is think that way. I actually have a really good friend who's even religious and she doesn't think twice 
about asking me to share things that I bought, courses that I bought with her. And I'm saying, no, I paid for this. I'm not allowed to share it because you didn't buy it and that would be robbing that guy of a sale. I don't want somebody to do that to me, so I'm not going to do it to him. And she doesn't get it. You know, she doesn't get it. And yet, she doesn't get paid for a lot of what she does because, you know what? Karma. <laughs> you get what you sow. And so, just think about how to treat people with respect and manners. I miss manners tonight. <laughs> Your mom going, you need to behave yourself. And... Um, but it's important for us to bring up these touchy subjects because we need to know how to behave. What's the protocol? You know, I remember when I first joined Facebook and I was in a group and I was posting inappropriate things. I was having a conversation with somebody on a thread and the conversation kept going and going and going just between her and me. Well, it was a conversation to a group and I shouldn't have, they called it hijacking the conversation, but I didn't know the manners on Facebook. So the wonderful group leader just private messaged me and said, you know, if you want to talk to that person, private message them or go on their timeline. And he educated me on the manners of how you act on Facebook. That's why we tell you how to act in our, you know, Pencil Drawing College and Sandy Land and other places. We let it be clear what we do on here and what we don't do on here. And that way you don't, you know, make a mistake and have bad manners because every little tribe has its own you know rules and you need to respect them whenever I post in another group on Facebook I read their rules and then I post according to their rules or if I'm not sure I'll private message the administrator and ask for permission and they'll tell me where to post it or if I'm not allowed to post it and so just think of others as you would think of yourself. And there is a verse in the Bible that says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So think that way. Think, think when you're seeing something that's copyrighted or a photograph that doesn't belong to you. Think, excuse me, I had some pop earlier. Um, they Think about how you would feel if that was yours. Would you want somebody to ask you for permission? you know, and all of that, and and um, then treat that person accordingly. Now, protecting your copyrights is another story, and that is whenever I post, most of the time, like probably 95% of the time when I post, I will post with a URL watermarked onto my artwork so that people, if it does get stolen, which it always does on Facebook, and we call it um, viral. <laughs> I want people to forward my stuff on Facebook because it gets out there to more people. So to protect the art or for people to be able to track it back to me if they want to learn how to draw something like that, um, I put PencilDrawingCollege.com on it because that's the action that I want people to take. I want them to go to PencilDrawingCollege.com and sign up for these free workshops. Okay? Now, if I was selling my art, I would put sandraangelo.com because that would drive them to my website where they would buy art from me. I don't um, sell much art. Uh, people approach me and, and buy art from me occasionally, but I don't promote my art because I'm more interested in promoting you than I am in selling my own work. I occasionally do, but I don't really have a website where I, you know, sell my art per se. But if I did, then I would lead them to, I would sign it, sandraangelo.com. And I would never just sign it with my name. That sounds crazy, but I have an MBA in marketing. And I want them to go to the URL. So I'm not just going to put Sandra Angelo on it because they may not be able to find me. But, or maybe somebody else has the URL with your name on it. So um, I put sandraangelo.com. And uh, that way they can find, you know, they can go where I want them to go. If I'm teaching a course on how to draw your dogs, I have howtodrawyourdog.com and I put that on the piece of art. So that when people forward it or they think it's cute or whatever, if their friend sees it, 
they'll be able to track me down and find out how to take that class or they'll go to howtodrawyourdog.com and sign up. So think about what you want, what kind of action you want people to take when you're in pencil drawing college or in the apprenticeship or the atelier. We give, um, well not in uh, pencil drawing college, but in the atelier and the apprenticeship program we give you free marketing advice because we want you to be successful. And today this is free marketing advice. I'm giving you a lot of really good tips about how to behave in what the protocols are in the art world and then how to deal with copyrights for yourself and for others and for posting and things like that. So if you're going to be posting your work I recommend you always always at least sign it so that someone knows it is. There's a lot of times when I see photographs where I really want to draw it or I want to forward it but the person didn't put their name. They didn't put their name on the photo so how am I going to find them? You know, so you need to watermark your work, and in Pencil Drawing College, we teach you how to do that. But most of the stuff you create in Pencil Drawing College, you don't need to watermark because it's not going to belong to you. You're going to be copying the masters. Um, and so you must never, never watermark your name on someone else's work because it isn't yours. It's someone else's. Now, if you do something, there is a protocol. If you do something that's been copied after a master, Let's just say that um, you know you were you were going to post it um, in your on your page. Let's just say you were going to post on your timeline that you're in pencil draw you're in colored pencil college. So then the the polite thing to do would be to ask if it's okay for the person who owns the copyright and the person who's teaching the class. And then you would ask them what URL you want on that piece. So let's just say that you did a, a drawing of a cat and um, you wanted to post it on your timeline to talk about the fact that you're taking this um, online course. Well, of course, the, the teacher is going to want you to do that because it, it gets the word out about the courses to other people, but you must do it with their coursework on it. So you would put coloredpencilcollege.com on the artwork because that's where the artwork came from. Okay? And so you wouldn't be signing your name on it. And then it would be polite also to promote that master who's helping you become better just as a gift, as a return thank you for helping me become a better artist. You support the master, the master supports you and everybody wins. And so when you post it you might say something like I'm taking this course at coloredpencilcollege.com and I am loving every minute of it and I'm really surprised to see how great my work is turning out and if you want to sign up go to www.coloredpencilcollege.com so there you're talking about your work you're bragging about the master you're giving the master a lead as a gift in exchange for all the master has done for you and you know what? When you are a giver, um, you receive. You know, you receive what you give out, and um, people are grateful to you. One of the things I learned when I became a magazine columnist was that the best way to get anything in the art world, whether I wanted to be published in a book or a magazine or on TV or whatever, I would always give. To the people before I asked for anything and give and give and then ask. You know, one of the um, television stations that invited me to um, do a, a, a live demo on their network, it was called Creative Living. It's not, it doesn't exist anymore, but in those days it was, um, you know, on HGTV. And I was invited, or TNN, it was on the Nashville network. And um, I was invited to do a show, and I saw this cat that was like, um, what are those really fluffy cats called? I forgot. Uh, anyway, the the kind that are just big and big and fluffy. Like if you if you saw them wet, you'd just see bones, but they're big and fluffy. Uh, Persian Persian cat. I saw a Persian cat on the set, and it belonged to the producer. So I took a picture. And I went home and I did a drawing of that cat 
Well, you know what? She had hundreds of guests coming and going, but she always remembered me. And she invited me back six times because I gave. I gave to her. I was kind and I was considerate. Before I asked, I gave. And somebody who helped me, she helped me by putting me on TV, I gave back. I didn't just take it, I gave back. And so that whole attitude of, I'm going to support the people who are supporting me, just like we ask you when you go to sandersfavoritestuff.com, buy it from us because we make a little percentage of it. And that's the gratitude that you're showing for me doing all the research and saving you all that money, buying the wrong stuff. And so... Um, when you do favors for the people who have changed your life, it, it comes back to you. And um, think about that in your family, too. You know, your mom, she works so hard. I don't even know how mothers do it. I don't think I could be one. But say thank you more than on Mother's Day. Buy her nice little things. Do things for her. Do the dishes and surprise her when she gets home, even when it's not your turn. Um, or send her a nice little praise bouquet. That's one of my favorite gifts is when somebody tells me how wonderful I am. <laughs> because that's my love language is praise and affirmation, one of them. Um, and so my sister will often send me a little praise bouquet that tells me why she appreciates me and what, how thoughtful it was and all that kind of stuff. And it, I keep I don't I hardly ever keep cards because cards and gifts are not my love language. But if somebody writes out how wonderful I am, I keep the card. <laughs> so um, I think that it's important for you just to learn these things if you want to be successful in the art world. I mean, it's 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 really for any world, but you know, it especially stands out in the art world because there aren't that many people out there that teach artists how to be successful like we do in the Atelier and the Apprenticeship program and um, that's why our students go to the top and um, other people end up staying poor artists and uh, we, we give them a free course when they sign up for the Apprenticeship or the Atelier the Advanced Apprenticeship, in fact we're going to kind of merge those two, the Apprenticeship and the Atelier in the coming um, in a few weeks because we have some spaces available that just vacated and um, so we're going to we when we have them in there they get a free two thousand dollar course called what rich artists do that poor artists don't and there's a big difference because it's how you behave you know what you think what you say how you treat people, whether you are respectful of other people's rights, whether you are smart in protecting your own rights, and um, all of that kind of stuff. Then there's all these things about, uh, you know, protecting your copyrights and trademarks and stuff like that, and we go into that in um, the course called What Rich Artists Do That Poor Artists Don't. It's an eight-week course that um, it's basically the roadmap of how I got from obscurity to worldwide fame and um, how you can make money because I have an MBA in marketing how you can make money um, with your art doing something that you love okay so that's just a brief overview of kind of how copyrights work and um, how you should protect your own work and all that kind of stuff and like I said we go into a lot more depth than that in pencil drawing college and in your apprenticeship program and also in uh, the atelier. Um, we take good care of our people in there because we really want them to succeed. Um, and so there's a lot more about that there. But I thought I would just give that to you for free today as a little bonus for showing up here in Sandy Land a little early tonight. And I've got an appointment. Uh, let's see. Yeah, i got to go. So um, I hope you have enjoyed tonight's lesson. Thank you for the gratitude. A lot of you say really nice things and are appreciative, and I appreciate that. And I'm going to just quickly check the questions to see if there's anything I need to know. i got to switch glasses. i use my close-up glasses here. Okay, we're back home. Create with your words just like God did. We are created in His image. Yes, you're absolutely right, Portia. 
Oh, you're welcome for holding the Monet bag. I didn't want it to come while you were gone. Oh, Diane asked a question. Um, it's No, you can't post artwork that you did in someone else's class. That's illegal um, because it's not it's copyrighted. So anything that is copyrighted, you need to ask permission. So that would be a special request between you and the, the artist. Most of the time, the answer is no, unless you are going to do that to help promote them, and then the answer would probably be yes. Um, and, of course, it varies from person to person. But no, um, in fact... I'm glad you asked that, Diane, because I actually found out about... One of the things about the Internet is you can't get away with anything anymore. <laughs> used to be if you lived in, you know, Cleveland, nobody in Norway knew what you were doing. But now you get caught. So um, somebody wrote to me and told me that there was a guy illegally copying my DVDs and selling them on eBay and so I got a hold of eBay and you know told them unless you want a lawsuit you better shut that guy down and then um, there was another person that contacted me and told me that um, someone had entered an art contest with one of my drawings <laughs> can you even believe that somebody didn't think that through like you didn't even draw that, you copied it, and now you're entering it and pretending that it's yours? Really? <laughs> it's hard for me to believe that somebody wouldn't wouldn't think of that. Like, why would you? That's like a forgery, you know? Um, but it's an innocent question, what you asked, Diane, because you just want to brag. You just want to brag about what you did, and you want to talk about your course. And if you're in my course... I always say yes as long as it has the URL on it so it's going to lead people back to my course and I always ask you to please put the URL in your post and obviously I don't want you to say something rude <laughs> um, so I but you know ask the person that you're working with and if they say no just respect that there may be other masters who don't feel like I do um, personally, if you brag about, you know, that you're in Pencil Drawing College and you just finished this and it says PencilDrawingCollege.com in your post, that's good for me. Why wouldn't I want you to post that? As long as you're making it clear that it's not your art, you're just learning from a master. Um, so that would make sense. And when you think it through, you kind of think about, well, is this going to benefit the person that I'm asking? That, that's the way to always think. Is this going to benefit somebody that I'm asking? Like when I was talking to that lady who was selling the cruises, I said to her, I thought about this in my brain because I, I think it's so rude when people post in my, on my page and tell people to go buy supplies somewhere else or to go, um, go take a class from someone else or whatever. That's just, it's just so rude. And, um, so for me to ask the lady who sells cruises if she could refer me to another company, that is kind of rude. Except that it was almost midnight and I had to buy it before midnight and I had told her that um, about 15 minutes earlier when we started the conversation. And um, she was trying to get me to buy it without explaining it to me and she'd only talked with me for 15 minutes. and. I wasn't going to buy something that's thousands of dollars without understanding it. And she says, you need to buy it and there's no refunds. And I was like, can you tell me someone else who's going to be open on New Year's Eve? And that wasn't rude. But I thought about it before I asked her because I didn't want to be rude. But she had made it really clear that she couldn't help me and she couldn't sell this to me. And I'm so glad I didn't buy from them because... The next cruise company that I called, you can get a refund up until three months before the boat leaves. I mean, that's really the way it should be. So she was really pressuring me. So think about the other person. Like when you're asking for something, think about how you would feel if someone asked you, you know? And, and some people are funny. Like I've asked for things that was a very reasonable request and somebody would just be really insulted. And I'm thinking, oh. Okay, you know, that's obviously a person that's not going to go on my list. Peanut butter is a trouble can. Um, you know, just 
there are people like that in the world who are very protective. Like, for example, uh, there was a guy at an art show who was showing his work, and I really liked it, but I was in a hurry, and I didn't have time to buy the work then, but I wanted to buy it online. And I said to him, do you have a website? Do you have a business card? I can." And he just went into this angry um, spitfire you know, um, lecture, and he said, I don't put my stuff on the Internet because someone's going to steal it. And I thought, wow, that's a really... Um, scarcity mindset you know I put my stuff on the internet and yeah sometimes people steal it when I find out I tell them you're gonna get sued if you don't take that down you know because it's illegal what you just did um, and sometimes you have to sue people it's part of doing business um, and um, you know you have to make it clear I mean put a C in a circle that it is copyrighted and um, you know, you need to take the proper actions, but there are times when people will contact me and I will say no. You know, like that lady who had just ripped me off for $35,538 or whatever it was by giving my workbook to all her students for free. She photocopied it. Not only is it illegal for her to do that for me because she's stealing, but it's illegal for the school to allow her. I could have sued that school you know, and recovered the $35,000. It's crazy that someone would come up to you and say that to you, that they could be that. Okay, anyway, so um, so just think about what it, you know, what, how are you going to, how is that person that you're asking going to benefit? Like, for example, when I did do a drawing because I don't sell my work, um, very much. I sell it once in a while, but um, I don't sell, I'm not like in that business of selling my art per se. Um, if I borrow a, a photograph from someone, say, in my family, I'll give them a print of the drawing. You know, well, normally in the art world, you would sell that print. Um, and I sell prints of my drawings to the hospitals and things like that. So, but, you know, think about how you can give back you know, to that person. Like, there was a lady, um, I just borrowed a, a drawing of her. She has this adorable little girl who's always cuddling with kitties, and it's just like, oh, my alter ego. And I love drawing her, and she lets me draw her kids, and she signs release forms. And the other day, she made me a skirt, a really beautiful skirt. I hired her to make me a skirt, and I paid her a really good price to make it because I felt like, you know, here she's doing this for me that's helping my business, so let me help her business. You know, I'll hire her to do a skirt for me because she's letting me use these photos. You know, so think about what can you do to return the favor if you're asking a favor. And the best thing is to be giving favors first and then ask. But if you are in a position where you need to ask and you didn't have a chance to give any favors, at least do something back to that person so that they feel like, you know, you're a giver and not a taker. Okay, so let me check you <laughs> other glasses. Yeah, I can't see without them. Mm. Hi, Frida. I don't remember you being with us before. Hello from Stockton. We're glad you joined us. How do you private message someone? Betty Davis says, what are the steps? Oh, boy. You know what? I um, would Google that um, and go to YouTube. YouTube is the best place in the world to figure anything out. I mean, they have tutorials for everything. So just go to YouTube and Google, how do you private message on Facebook? Because it's pretty involved. I'd have to show you, make a video to show you how. Cassandra Trent says, thank you for the talk. Thanks for the gratitude. Shannon says, thank you. Thanks for the gratitude. Regina says, thank you. I appreciate gratitude. Thank you. Gratitude means a lot to me. And thanks for asking that question, Diane Ridpath. That was a really good question. Thank you so much. There's no such thing as a bad question or a dumb question in Sandyland. Clover says, I agree, lift people up. Everything you take becomes a part of you, and that's what is going to come out of your mouth. That's very true. That's why you don't want to hang out with people who swear. 
People respond nicely to nice words spoken to them. Betty says, I like your message today. I really agree that your language and how you speak reflects volumes on who you are and how you want to be treated. So true. Christina said, loves the, whoops, oh dear. Love the colors in your outfit. Thank you, Christina. I appreciate the compliment. Ah, I'm hitting the wrong button. I might shut us off. Nice looking hat. Thank you, Boyd. Bad hair day. So I had to wear a hat today. <laughs> okay, kids, I got to go. I got an appointment, and it's been super fun being with you tonight. I love, love being with you in Sandyland. And remember, these are all recorded, so if you've missed the other broadcasts, look under videos. I'm going to ask my assistant to post a Word document with links to all the videos in um, the Facebook group, too, just so that if you're on your tablet or your phone, you know, it doesn't say videos at the top. I hate that. I wish they would. But anyway, uh, but on the computer, it does say videos on the left-hand side, and you can just click there. And then my assistant made us a YouTube channel with all of these free lessons, free sessions. So you, if you're on our list at PencilDrawingCollege.com, then you will get a link to the YouTube videos where you can just binge watch. Um, I had to work on some art yesterday, and so... I binged watched while I was working on the art. I love binge watching. I like to work really hard and then play really hard, get some good food and just curl up after an exhausting day and watch something really fun that I that's entertaining to me. Okay, so I will be seeing you tomorrow night and remember in Sandy Land we always go for the gold. And remember when you go for the gold, there will be miracles. Okay. Oh, I just hate this. Ah.